15. God is supposed to know the future, and yet I'm supposed to have free will. How could that happen? It can't. <laughs> uh, a short answer. I, I, I take the view that if God knew what I'm going to do, then it's already settled uh, what I'm going to do. And for me to be free when that event, you know, when that occasion comes up, I'd have to be able to change the past, change God's beliefs. Uh, and I don't think that makes any sense. So I, I do think that because God couldn't cause me to freely do thus and so, that just doesn't make sense. He has to leave it genuinely open if he wants that kind of freedom to be in the world. And then it's just not settled yet. So there's no fact to know. That contradicts virtually all uh, theologians and philosophical theologians in the last, I don't know, thousand years. Well, there is a movement. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's a, 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 uh, an underground uh, uh, movement, uh, uh, people who call themselves open theists. And, uh, this and is looked upon as heresy. Yeah, they're renegade theologians. And fortunately, I'm in a philosophy department, <laughs> right, right, so right, my right. job is safe. <laughs> right. You know, I can say whatever. Okay, I but like. but let, uh, let's understand why, if if what you're saying makes sense, d does the majority and the historical tradition of certainly uh, a Christian theology and Christian philosophical theology say otherwise? Well, Christians in particular get committed to this absolute iron kind of providence where God brings everything about. Good, yes. some, some, some are committed to that. Yes. You know, I think that comes from privileging the notions, notions of God's power uh, and his, his absolute control. And once you get that, you really have a problem with free will, it seems. Now, there's, there's a lot of mechanisms that people have introduced <laughs> to try to make the freedom of the action compatible with God's knowing the whole scope of history at once. Right. The open theists, I number myself amongst the open theists, uh, we don't believe any of those mechanisms work. Yeah, what, what is, a, what is uh, one of the mechanisms? Well, so, so one of them is middle knowledge, the idea that God has some knowledge about what indeterministic, how, how various indeterministic events were gonna turn out or would have turned out if they were allowed to, to happen. The idea is before he decided whether to create Adam and Eve, so to speak. He knew that if Adam were freely offered an apple by Eve and the wind was blowing like this and the, right. and the uh, serpent had spoken like so, um, then Adam would freely take it. Right. Now, there is something that they can say, which is that these are just contingent facts about what Adam would have freely done if he'd been in this situation, if he'd been in that situation. These are contingent facts that God doesn't have any control over. I'm suspicious about these facts. I just don't think there are such facts. You're elevating, privileging, if you will, free will very significantly, God's foreknowledge, God's control, God's providence about the future and about what's going to happen is diminished. Yes, I have to admit that it is diminished. Right. So you are diminishing the power of God. Oh no, <laughs> I, I, I'm waiting for a lightning bolt here. <laughs> what I think is that there is a kind of logical incompatibility about freedom of will, freedom of choice, and determinism, God bringing it about, it, that's just a, sort of a matter of logic. And uh, uh, so if God wants those kinds of creatures, if they, if they are worth making, then he has to make a world in which it's not settled ahead of time what they do. And that's up to him whether he wants a world like that.